Hey everyone, it's Job. In this video, I'll be showing you the process of assembling the computer components of a mining rig. I'll be using the frame I built in part one of this video series, so if you're interested in seeing how to construct the frame, check out my previous video. All the parts and links I reference in this video are listed in the description below. For this build, I'm using the following components. A Gigabyte GA H110 D3A motherboard. This motherboard is made for mining and includes mining configuration options in the EUFI or BIOS. An Intel Celeron G3900 CPU. Arctic Silver Thermal Paste. A Patriot DDR4 8GB memory module. A Crucial BX300 120GB SSD. A six pack of Libu PCIe risers. A Libu power supply extension cable. Two Corsair RM1000X 1000 watt power supplies. In this build, I use NVIDIA 1080 Ti's. It is difficult to find GPUs currently as most sellers are out of stock. Shop around and be sure you're not overpaying for the cards. A 1070 should be in the $400 range. A 1070 Ti should be in the high 400s, low 500s. A 1080 should be high 500s, low 600s. And a 1080 Ti should be between 700 and 850. Shop around and find the prices that work for you. Okay, now that we have all our parts, we can start assembly. The first thing we'll want to do is install the CPU and heatsink. Remove the plastic protective cover. Open the locking lever and lift up the metal retainer. The CPU has an arrow on one of the corners. You'll want to make sure to line this up with the arrow on the motherboard's CPU socket. The CPU also has notches that ensure you install it in the correct position. Once it's inserted, close the metal retainer and close the locking lever. Now get some Arctic Silver or another type of thermal paste and apply some to the top of the CPU. Then place the heat sink on top of the CPU. Make sure to line up its fasteners with the holes in the board. Once it's sitting on top, get a flathead screwdriver and depress the fasteners until you feel them slide into the holes. Then turn them to lock them. Once you have all four fasteners secured, double check that they're all secured by lifting up on the heat sink and fan. It should not move out or away from the motherboard. Be sure to plug the CPU fan power cable into the CPU power pins on the motherboard. Now we want to secure the motherboard to the frame. Align your motherboard on top of the motherboard standoffs and secure it with screws. I have a bunch of old screws in a cup that I pull from, but if you have trouble finding screws to use, you can always purchase some off of Amazon or a local computer store. Once the board is secured, I install the memory module. Open the ears on the motherboard stem slots. Be sure to align the memory with the board by lining the notch in the memory with the notch in the dim slot on the motherboard. Insert the memory and apply pressure on each end of the memory module until it snaps in. Next, I secure the power supplies to the frame. Line up the power supply screw holes with the hole you drilled into the frame. If it's a little too low, lift up on the back of the power supply and get the screw started. If the hole's a little too high, Lift up on the front of the power supply and get the screw started. It doesn't matter if your power supply wiggles a little bit. You can also add a bit more support by adding a screw to the bottom of the power supply. Having the head of the screw tighten the power supply to the frame. You can also use a washer to make it grab on a bit better. Once the power supplies are secured to the frame, I go ahead and plug in the power supply's 24-pin motherboard power cables. I also use the Libu power supply extension cable to daisy chain the power supplies together. This cable will extend the pair of wires that sends the on off signal to the power supplies so that they both turn on and off at the same time. Be sure to plug the primary power supply into the side on the adapter that has all 24 wires. The primary power supply will be the power supply you choose that will power the motherboard, CPU, and SSD. This primary power supply will also power three of the GPUs as well as those GPUs PCIe risers. 
the secondary power supply will only power three GPUs and their corresponding PCIe risers. I then plug the extension cable into the 24 pin power port on the motherboard. I then plug the CPU power cable into the primary power supply and then plug this into the 4 pin CPU power port on the motherboard. Now I install the SSD. I plug in the SATA power cable into the primary power supply. I then attach a SATA cable to the SSD and then plug the SSD into one of the available SATA power ports and plug the SATA cable to a SATA port on the motherboard. I go ahead and plug the rest of the power cables I'll be using into the power supplies. I plug in three PCI power cables and one SATA power cable into both power supplies. I now install the SW power cable into the SW power pins on the motherboard. This is the button that will be used to power on, restart, and shut down the computer. Now, we will assemble one of the PCI risers and attach it to a GPU. We want to plug the riser's power cable in and then plug in the USB 3 cable. We then plug the other end of the USB 3 cable to the PCIe 1X card that comes with the riser kit. Be sure to open the locking clips if your risers have one. Now we can plug a GPU into the PCI riser. Line it up with the notches and slide it on. Don't forget to close the locking clip and be sure to remove any protective plastic on your GPU. With the GPU connected to the PCIe riser, I rest the GPU on a spot on the frame. You may want to remove some of the DisplayPort protector tabs if they get in your way. You can either secure the GPU with a tech screw or a zip tie. If using tech screws, keep your hand cupped under the hole to catch any metal filings. Plug the risers PCIe 1X into an available PCIe slot on the motherboard, and then plug the power into the PCIe riser. I then plug power into the GPU, using the same power supply that's powering the GPU's PCIe riser. There's some debate on this subject as to whether it's better to power all PCIe risers with the same power supply that powers the motherboard. I've personally not had any issues powering it the way I do in this video, but if you have issues with your build, you might consider powering all your risers with the same power supply that powers the motherboard, then split the GPU's power up between the power supplies. Another thing I like to do with these custom frame builds is to add a cable to ensure that the motherboard is grounded to the frame and to both power supply cases. Most computer cases are made out of metal, and so when you screw a motherboard to them, the screws ground the board to the case, and the case is attached to the power supply case, providing a path for electricity if there's ever a short or static buildup. I use an old piece of wire and strip both ends. I screw one end underneath one of the screws that attach the motherboard to the frame, and then I screw the other end of the wire to one of the screws on the bottom of the frame. You can probably safely skip this step, but I like to do it to be extra secure in the safety of my equipment. Once the GPU is hooked up, it's time to power up the computer. Hook up your monitor, keyboard, and mouse. Be sure to turn the power switches on the power supplies to the on position. The circle means it's off, and the straight line means it's on. Click your power button, and if all's connected properly, the computer should power up. I enter into my motherboard's EUFI or BIOS by hitting F2. Some boards are different, so watch the post screen or look in your motherboard's manual to get the proper key to enter BIOS or EUFI. The motherboard I use is made for mining, so I go ahead and enable mining mode to leverage all PCIe lanes. Depending on your motherboard, you may need to tweak settings so it'll see all your cards. Here are some settings to look for. Above 4G decoding. Enable this if your board has it. If your board has PCI latency, try increasing this to above the default of 32 to 64 or 128. You may also need to change your board's PCIe speed. Change it to Gen 1. Also consider disabling your motherboard's onboard sound controller, serial port, 
and onboard video if you're not going to use them. This will free up system resources. At this point, you'll want to install an operating system. I install Windows 10, but feel free to use whatever operating system you prefer. I'll not go through the steps of installing Windows as there's plenty of resources on the internet to assist in this, but I did include a link in the description to Microsoft's Windows 10 Installation Media Creator. Once I have my operating system installed and fully patched and updated, I install my GPU's device drivers. I'm using NVIDIA cards, so I go to NVIDIA's driver download site and download the appropriate drivers. Run through the installation wizard and reboot your computer once finished. Now that the GPU drivers are installed, I go ahead and install the remaining GPUs into my rig. I like to turn my power supplies off while I do this to make sure I don't accidentally power up the system while working on it. Attach the PCIe risers to each GPU and mount each GPU onto the frame. Plug power into the risers and the GPUs. Plug the PCI extenders 1x PCI card into the motherboard and secure the GPUs to the frame with screws or zip ties. Once all the GPUs are installed, power up your system and ensure that Windows sees all the GPUs and has a driver for them. You can check this in the Windows Device Manager. If Windows shows some of the GPUs with issues, reinstall the driver package and try again. At this point, if only some of your GPUs are showing up, check your cabling and make sure that you have enough power from your power supplies. Depending on your motherboard, you may have different BIOS or EUFI settings that need to be enabled or disabled. Google is your friend. Search for issues with multiple GPUs and your motherboard. Again, the most common issues are that you'll need to enable above 4G decoding, increase PCI latency, and or change the PCIe speed to Gen 1. If you have issues, let me know and I'll do my best to help you search for a solution. That's it. Your miner's now ready to mine. I won't go through the steps of setting up mining software in this video but I plan on making more videos on setting up different miners. I currently have one video on how to set up a Zcash wallet and miner, so check it out if you're interested. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video was helpful. I plan on making more mining videos, so hit that subscribe button below to stay updated. If you have any questions, please ask them in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. I've included some of my crypto addresses in the description below as donations are greatly appreciated and go towards funding future videos. Thanks again and good luck.